This summit will be 10 years since the release of Spike Lee's feature debut, She's Gotta Have It. His latest film, Girl Six, is the first time he has returned to a female-centered story. It is a story sure to inspire as much discussion as any of his previous works. The film follows an aspiring actress who is down on her luck and becomes a phone sex operator in order to pay her bills. As she becomes immersed in the fantasy world, she learns more about her acting skills and her self-image than she ever did with any acting job. Joining me now to talk about movies and phone sex and other things is Spike Lee, filmmaker. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing yeah. good. It's All good right. to have you here. You're on your Glad way to, to be watch the Knicks, and we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, Reggie, you like Reggie, don't you? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, even though... Little... I got blown out of proportion. Yeah, we, yeah. we like each other. Girl 6. Mm -hmm. The new movie, number mm -hmm. 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9 meaning what? Number... The ninth film. Oh, the ninth film, you, right. Uh, the, no, the Beatles song. <laughs> The, the notion of you returning to a movie in which the central character is a woman, any mm -hmm. significance in that? Yeah, I th we thought it was time. Ten years has been long enough if you, if you don't count Crook when we're lead character yeah. was a, a girl ten years old. So uh, we felt that, as you said, with me in this article, it's be ten years since we did She's Gonna Have It Was Time to go back and, and try to do something else. Where we had the lead, where the lead was a female. Where the story come from? Well, the story really came from, uh, you know, thinking about she's gonna have it and how in that film, Nola Darlin has three lovers at the same time. And, you know, people thought that was cute and stuff like that, but that was before AIDS. And now 10 years later, you know, that kind of conduct and behavior, you know, is, is dangerous. and. Ten years ago, the, the, the phone sex business was in its infancy. It was not a multi-billion dollar industry. So these two things is really to look how things have changed in the past ten years. And why does she get involved in phone sex, your lead why? character? Quick money. She's trying. She's a starving actress living here in New York. And like most starving actors here in the city, they feel that if they get to Los Angeles, if they just, just get to Hollywood. Get the break, they'll be a star get the break, there'll be a star, and she needs this quick cash to finance the trip to Hollywood. Who's the lead actress? Lead actress is Teresa Randall. Teresa's a very fine actress, was in two other of my films, uh, Jungle Fever and Malcolm X. Set this film up. This is Phone Sex is Not Acting, in which uh, the discovery of the art of phone sex with Girl Six, Teresa Randall, as we oh, said. Well, in this, yeah, I'm in the film also, and I play... <laughs> Imagine I, my surprise! <laughs> I play her, her, her neighbor and... Uh, Confidant. I, confident. I have like dreams of my own. I'm a, a sports memorabilia collector. Yeah. And so I'm getting on why is she, you know, forsaking, forsaking her acting career to do this phone bone stuff, as I yeah. say. Roll, roll tape. Here it is. Pretty good there, sir. Do all right. Why do you put yourself in well, your films? Very simple reasons that the people who do like my film would like to see me in them. Uh, the first... This is Alfred Hitchcock kind of thing. No, I mean, because I do more than cameos. No, but, I know you do, but I mean, it's the idea that people always look for him to be in his films, even though it was a cameo. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the first film, She's Gonna Have It, the only reason I was in that film playing Mars Black was because we couldn't afford to, to uh, pay anybody else. And Orion seemed to like that, and Nike liked it enough to pair you, yeah. me and Michael Jordan together. So, you know, it just, that's where it started. Do you like it? I mean, you No, I don't like acting. You don't? No. Why not? It's rough. It's very hard to be a good actor, and, and I think what I do is limited, so I just try to do my little part and get out of the way and let the great actors like Denzel, Wesley, Anthony Quinn, John Turturro, Danny Hello, people like the Ozzy Davis. Let yeah, them but this be. is a principal character in this film. Well, it's just not really, Oh, it is. Charlie, Come on, because, it? No, really, it's, this is a star vehicle for Teresa Randall, and so Isaiah and and... Isaiah Washington, who plays her ex-husband, and I, we were like He's supporting a her. Yes. <laughs> we're like supporting players to her star, star, star part, star part. Yeah. You got a lot of sort of roles by friends of yours, I assume. You got Madonna plays a little Madonna, role. John Turturro, Ron Silver, Naomi Campbell, Peter Berg. And Quentin Tarantino. Halle Berry. Quentin Tarantino plays a director named Hot, he plays the hottest director in Hollywood. And there's a great scene in which she comes in and he asks her to... Yes, yeah, so the scene, the movie opens with the, an audition where he's casting an actress for the greatest 
African-American romance ever filmed to be directed by him. <laughs> and uh, he asked her to take off her top. Yeah, and she says... She does it, but she leaves in a huff. Yeah. And then later, at the end of the movie, are we giving the movie away? We come all the way back? Yes. All right, let's stay away from that then. <laughs> uh, let me look at another film, because I have a lot of things I want to talk to you about. This set this up. This is a fantasy se sequence uh, in Girl 6 as Foxy Brown. Set this clip up for me. Well, one of Girl 6's problems is that she is a lot, a lot of times she has difficulty, you know, distinguishing reality from fantasy, so she goes off into... Well, set another way. I mean, I don't want to prompt the great director, but set another way is that she gets into the role. Well... And sort of... Let's see. All right. Roll tape. Here it is. We're back with Spike Lee. Uh, let me talk a little bit about what's now this controversy that was on the front page of, uh, on the cover of People, People Magazine. Magazine. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well... People magazine chose a very opportune time to come out with this, this article about uh, how black people, minorities, are not really represented in the film industry. And uh, the time was good because, you know, the, the Academy Awards are Monday night. And this year, there are 166 nominees. And only one of those nominees is an African American, no Latinos, no Native Americans. Uh, why do you think that no, is? Well, I think that those numbers that I tell you really reflect the <laughs> the membership of the people who vote. And I think that uh, we're just really treated as second class. To be honest, we're treated as second class citizens. Just who should have been nominated that wasn't? Well, I mean, I could think. I think Don Cheadle, his performance in Devil in the Blue Dress. Uh, Delroy Lindell for, for Clockers. I think that Babyface should have been nominated for Best Song or Whitney and... Waiting? Yeah, for Waiting Next yeah. Hell. And, uh, we, you know, there's a lot of technical stuff, too, but uh, we just don't... I guess we're not talented enough to get these nominations. That's not what you think. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. We just don't have the talent, Charlie. Jackie Robinson, mm -hmm. a movie that you very much want to make. Yes, we've been work we've been working on this for the last two years, and we had we had a deal, we had a development deal with Ted Turner, Turner Pictures, and they put it in turnaround, so they won't be making it, but hopefully we'll be able to to find somebody who will spend the, the necessary amount of money to make this film correctly. Forty. No, no, we can do it for thirty million dollars. No, we can do it for thirty-five, and thirty-five is average. That's the average budget, budget okay. for a Hollywood film Here's what film somebody today. told me. Mm -hmm. They said, Spike knows that with Malcolm X, he said he could make it then less than he could. And he knew that, but he wanted to get the money in order to... Oh, listen to me. He Who's, wanted to get to, to make the movie. So I could have made it less than No, one? said that it, you knew it was going to take more than $25 million to make it. Right. You know, but you only said $25 million because you didn't, you didn't no, think you could that, get that much money true. to make it. That's not true, Charlie. We, all, we told Warner Brothers from the very beginning... 40 that, million? No, we told them it was going to cost 33, what it actually cost. And they said they're only going to give us 20 domestically. And they said you could sell the foreign rights. And we sold the foreign rights to Largo for eight. So we were like still $5 million short. $5 but, million dollars short? Yes. Yeah, so and you I went never, out and raised it from Oprah and Bill I mean, Cosby and people like that? People, I mean, we, they got some. And then finally Warner Brothers kicked in with the rest of the money. But I never said I was going to... I've always said from the get-go that it was going to cost 33. So you didn't deflate what it was going to cost in order to make sure everybody was on board because this was a movie you wanted to make. Did and not, you realize you can't do that the second time. Did not do that. I was surprised. I was telling them it was cost 33. And I was surprised that the Bond Company and Warner Brothers and Largo signed up on the budget knowing I was saying it was going to cost 33, you know, from the beginning. The reason you can't raise $35 million to make a movie at a very appropriate time about Jackie Robinson will be, what, some anniversary of his, what? Well... 97. 97 will be the 50th anniversary of Jackie breaking the color barrier. Okay. And you can't raise $35 million to make that film. TNT, no, no. Turner was going to do it, and then they backed down. Well, they, they, they're, they're, for whatever reason, they said they just they don't feel well, What did they say? We don't want to make the movie. Okay, fine. But then you said why, and they said what? No, because a lot of they times... I'm pulling stuff out of you. It's a little hard it's for not, me here. I'm really telling you. I mean, you know, they, wanna, they don't want to tell me that the, that the script sucks because then, you know, they don't they want to work with me, you know, somewhere down the line. So they, 
you know, they try to be it's very political. So they yeah. just don't want to make it. Simple as that. Yeah, and and because obviously they didn't believe it would it was box office. Well, I mean, I guess they consider it just a black baseball film, and uh, and you considered it what? I consider it, consider it a, a great American story. Will it get made? Yes. You'll get the money. We'll get the money. And will Marvel you make it by 1997? No, that's not going to happen. But we'll get the film made. Uh, Marvin Worth, the man who produced Malcolm X, it took him 20 years to try to get it that sure film did. made. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not crying about it because this is the first time since I've been a filmmaker that I've never got a film made that I wanted to make. So I've been very lucky and uh, we were on a roll and it didn't work yeah. on Jackie Robinson, but the. It's the first time it's ever happened. The Knickerbockers. Yes. What do you think about them this year? Well, I was very happy when a, a national television, when it Nick's cream, the... The Bulls. The Bulls. And, and your pal Michael. My pal Michael was glad that the artist formerly known as Prince and his wife were my guests at that game. And tonight the Knicks play. And he does the sound. Does he do the music yeah, he for He did all the music for, thought, for right. Girl 6. And, Nick's going to beat Indiana tonight, and tomorrow my wife and I will be going to Chicago. To watch them beat the Bulls. With the Bulls, they'll be without Scottie Pippen. In Chicago. Pippen. In Chicago. They'll, they'll be without Pippen and Rodman. Yeah, both of them. Well, I guess they could do it then. Well, I don't know. Do Michael think... might pick up the slack, so yeah, well, it's not going to be easy. It's a lot of slack to pick up. It's not going to be easy, though. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the new Knicks with the new coach? Uh, I'm ready. Yeah. You know, if, for a while, things look very bleak, but I think that Chekets and Ernie Grunfeld did the right thing by... Getting rid of no, Nelson? He had to go. Why? Did the chemistry wasn't right with the, the chemistry players? Chemistry wasn't right with the players. I don't want to ask the question and answer them too. No, I'm just saying it wasn't right. And if you know, if the coach insults the main man, I mean, you have to Patrick be more, being the main man. Yes, you have to be very diplomatic. I mean, if the coach doesn't have the main man, doesn't have his confidence, and then the other players follow it up and you know you've lost the team. Well speaking of main men, how about John Thompson down at the Georgetown Hoyers? Yes, uh I'm um love I've always loved John Thompson and uh, I did a, a, uh, HBO, a HBO, HBO sports Real magazine sports. profile was terrific. Yeah I did that was that you was enjoy fun. doing that? Very much, very much. We'll do a couple more for them. And I'm looking forward to going down to Atlanta Saturday. My grandma lives in Atlanta. Yeah. She's ninety one. Spend the day with her, then going to the Georgia Superdome. This is your dad's mother or your My mother's, mother's mother? mother's mother. Yeah. And go and see, a, which really should be the national championship game, Georgetown against UMass. They both win Thursday night. Can Georgetown beat UMass? Yes. Can Georgetown win it all? Yes. Is Alvin, is Allen Iverson the MVP well, of the uh, Final Four? He will be if they win. Uh, it's going to take him, it's going to take him playing like that. Playing like an MVP to, for Georgetown to win, but uh, mm -hmm. and I hope that you know they'll make it back to the Meadowlands. What's next for you? Well, I'm doing a film, Charlie. We start shooting April on first. It's called Get on the Bus, and the film is about the Million Man March. It's about the journey of 20 African American men who board a bus in Los Angeles and make the cross country trip to D.C. for the march. And so in these 72 hours, you get to know every one of these guys on the bus and why, for their own specific reasons, why they're making this trip. Did that Million Man March speak to you? Yes. Yes, it did. And the great, you know, you had this whole thing about, you know, the, the boycott, you know, Jesse wants to boycott how, the, the... He's going to protest out of the yeah, Oscars. You know, protest Why aren't the Oscars. you out there in the, pro, in the line with him? Because, I, I mean, I'm, I have Jesse's full support, but first of all, I can't be out there because it makes me look like sour grapes i'm just out yeah, there because right. i didn't get nominated yeah. but i think what's even better is that this film my approach is this this film is being financed totally by 15 african-american men johnny cochran wesley bob, snipes wesley snipes danny glover bob johnson's bet uh normally charles smith for now the san antonio spurs yeah, late of the knicks late of the knicks so all of us have come together and finance this How about film. Michael Jordan? Uh, well, maybe it'll come in the, ne the next film, but uh, Columbia Pictures pick up distribution yeah. and the film is going to come out October 16th will be the one year anniversary of the march. You are how old? 
39 today. Your, today's your birthday. Yes, How 39. do you feel about 39? You know, there's really no big thing, to be honest. I mean, your birthday, 39. Uh, the age doesn't really, I mean, maybe it'll, uh, it'll hit me when it, next year with, with the big 4-0, but, you know, I'm going to go to the, get ready to go to the game right. now, see the Knicks. Well, don't go win yet. we game. got a little something here because we've been in conversation with some friends of yours, uh -oh. people who know you and care about you, and we got a little something here, so before you go, here it is. Bring this thing on out here, and we're going to show a little happy birthday for you, my friend. Look at this. Spike Lee is 39 years old today. Here's happy birthday. <laughs> and guess who these are from? My Did wife? You? Yeah, read it. Doesn't say. Well, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I got it, I got it, I got it. Got it. <laughs> All right. This is a young lawyer from Washington you met at Georgetown? Was she at Georgetown? No, or? she was at UVA. UVA. I met her at the D.C. Happy birthday, baby. I love you, <laughs> Tanya. I love you too, Tanya. Is she going to the game tonight? Yeah, she'll be right, be right there. Good luck, buddy. Happy birthday. Thank you. Great to see you, as All always. Right. Try to Gotta blow it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Spike Lee. The film is called Girl Six, uh, being released Friday. Friday. We'll be Thank right you. back. Stay with us.